Well, the Propaganda Games were founded in 2005, and we were acquired by Disney just five months later. Uh, we are the action-adventure uh, RPG studio for Disney Interactive Studios, focusing, of course, primarily on RPGs. Um, our first game was actually a shooter, uh, Turok, uh, which was a platinum-selling uh, title for, for Disney, sold over 1.4 million units. I think our philosophy has really evolved into a quality-first focus. Uh, we really take quality to heart in everything we do. It's, uh, it's built into the, the, the work-life balance at our studio. It's built into the, uh, the quality in, uh, in our products. Uh, and the way we develop is all centralized around quality. We have a very iterative development cycle where we, we do a lot of consumer testing. We bring in a lot of fans and, and uh, get them to play the product and really uh, iteratively improve on that and make it better. I think when the studio decided to, to focus on RPGs, uh, we started looking for IP within the Disney stable and really uh, Pirates of the Caribbean came up right away. It's a universe I think that uh, RPG fans would be dying to explore and uh, hey, who doesn't want to be a pirate? I think with a, with a, with a pirate uh, adventure you're, you're, you're able to live that fantasy of being uh, you know, just a little bit lawless and I think, uh, I think that really is appealing to everybody. I mean, you're a hero but you're also kind of a villain and I think uh, that sort of economy is really uh, working well for us with the, uh, with the legendary and the dreaded facet of the game. Well, my experience uh, with RPGs comes a lot from my time at Bioware. Uh, where really, of course, quality was a great focus, was a story-driven entertainment was a great focus. And I think a lot of that has spilled over. I mean, obviously, we have a lot of admiration for Bioware, and, uh, and really, we're all fans of their products. So I think that, that fandom and that, uh, that inspiration has really translated quite well into what we do. And as I said, quality has become a big focus for us here. Well, with an action RPG, there is that sort of core RPG user that wants the, the almost tactical side of RPGs. And then there's the, the action gamer that wants the, you know, the um, visceral action combat. And I think blending two together so that you provide uh, that experience for both consumers, I think, is, is difficult. But it's really rewarding when you get it nailed right. I mean, there's lots of facets that make a great RPG. You've also got to have the great customization and progression area. You've got to have great story. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot that you have to add. You have to make sure that you, that you fill all those. Oh, I think choice in an RPG is paramount. I mean, if you don't have choice, uh, choice without meaningful consequences, um, uh, it's really not a true RPG in my opinion. It's a role-playing game, so locking a player into the decisions isn't necessarily what you're striving for. You want to give them the ability to role-play that character and really make choices that they would. I mean, for me, when it comes to a meaningful choice, the, that's the one where, where you stare at the computer or you stare at your console and say, what am I going to do here? I mean, this, this, is, this, is, this is really meaningful and I know this is going to have a huge effect. What am I going to do as a person? And I think that's when you really, really get involved with the character and really get involved with the role-playing experience. Disney has a, a Pirates of the Caribbean MMO uh, that's done through, uh, through our counterparts down in California. Uh, I'm not that familiar with the product, but uh, I think for us, focusing on a single-player, uh, story-driven experience is something that I think a lot of um, MMO uh, players are looking for. I mean, they want a refreshing break from the, from the, you know, the big MMO fest and really get into that meaty, great RPG single player experience. I think with Legendary Dreaded, it doesn't feel like the same game twice. For me, it, it feels like two different games in a lot of respects. I mean, there's, they're obviously very, very tightly tied together in the, in the fiction and the choices that you make and the direction that you go. Uh, they all make sense for whether you're Legendary or Dreaded. Um, but the experience is so different, it's so unique that I think um, it's unique and different yet connected, if, I, if that makes sense. And, uh, and for me, I think that's the really, uh, the really interesting part that's going to cause a lot of replayability. You expect Pirates of the Caribbean Armada the Dam in early 2011. It's available for PC, PS3, and 360.